Let me read to you a passage from the 8th chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 21 to 30. It's the Gospel for Tuesday of the fifth week of Lent. St. John writes, Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, He is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, Where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, You belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What I have told you from the beginning. I have much to say about you in condemnation, but the one who sent me is true, and what I heard from him I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. That's from John chapter 8, verses 21 to 30. What does it suggest to us? Well, it is obvious from a reading of the Gospel of St. John that our Lord met with great incomprehension. His words evoked much controversy, and as is shown in our passage today, this incomprehension and controversy, leading in turn to rejection, applied in a special way to many and perhaps most of the Pharisees. Their incomprehension and hostility arose especially in relation to what our Lord said about himself. If we wish to draw near to Jesus of Nazareth and come to know him as his disciples, and what better could we do in life, then we must ponder his words about himself with a special attention of the heart. There was no issue with his being man, that was obvious. He was truly man, as were other men. The Pharisees had to recognize, too, that he was a great and holy master of the things of God. As our Lord said, the one who sent me is true, and what I heard from him I tell the world. The people accepted that he was a prophet. He not only claimed to be a prophet, but he claimed to be holy and sinless. For in our passage today he tells the Pharisees that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone because I always do what is pleasing to him. Jesus always, always did what pleased the Father. Never did he do anything, whether of thought or word or deed, which displeased the Father. At the beginning of his public ministry, after having been baptized, the voice of the Father pointed to him as the one in whom he was well pleased. And the same revelation was uttered at the end of his public ministry during his transfiguration on the mount, shortly before his passion. Our Lord knew he was entirely united to God his Father. He is the Holy One of our race, and even the demons that he expelled often angrily gave witness to this, crying out in false bravado, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. To be the disciple of one filled with such incomparable holiness is the greatest of privileges. But there is more. Not only is Christ holy beyond compare and uniquely close to the Father, not only does he announce to the world what he hears the Father tell him, St. John makes it clear that our Lord at times explicitly and at other times in veiled manner claimed also to be God. This was the most astounding of his many claims and makes him so unique. Elsewhere in St. John's Gospel, our Lord is attacked for violating the tradition of the Sabbath, the Sabbath rest, as the scribes and Pharisees taught it, and he replied that, the Father continues to work, and so do I. St. John observes that the leaders persecuted our Lord the more 
because he spoke of God as his own father, thus making himself equal to God. Here in the passage that I read earlier, our Lord speaks as one who is divine, sharing the very nature and name of God. He is the great I Am, who gave his name to Moses when it was requested. He said to them, You belong to what is below, I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. The Christian, reading St John's text, understands what our Lord was claiming to be, and that he was saying that belief in his divinity is what brings salvation. If you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. He is the Yahweh of the Old Testament though he is not the Father, who is also the one and only Yahweh God. Moreover, it would be his death that would especially reveal his divinity in the sense that the boundless mercy of God and his love for all mankind would be shown to be in him. When you lift up the Son of Man, he said, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. After Christ rose from the dead, Thomas bowed low before him and said, My Lord and my God. As St. Paul wrote, In Christ is present the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Let us read that Gospel passage that I read earlier, allowing the living Jesus to speak to us about himself, telling us where he is from, who and what he really is, and what he has come among us to do. Let us accept his word and entrust ourselves to him and to his service. Our life has been given to us in order that we might give glory and honour to Jesus, who is God. God chose us in him to be holy and full of love in his sight. Let us make this the goal of all our days.